Don here in Florida, and today I'm making a little video for guys that may just be getting going with their uh, lathes and learning how to use them and, and uh, work around them, or for even guys that may be stuck in a rut, you never change things up, and uh, you just want to do things different or learn something different. So uh, let's talk about adjusting tool height. Uh, this is kind of important because if you want to get a really good cut on your lathe, your, your tool, aside from being sharp, has to be adjusted properly. And to get your adjustment set proper, a lot of guys will go different ways. One real simple way to go is simply find your proper tool height at the center point, either by turning something and, and uh, turning to where you're getting rid of a nub uh, when you're facing off, and then measuring that point, and getting a pointer like this, set your height to, and always go back to that same point with this tool so that your your tool can always be used but the problem with this is in a shop sometimes we're not exactly careful about what we do and this may not stay accurate aside from that you may need this tool for something else i i use this method from time to time it's it's nice because this is something you don't lose on the workbench it's it's uh, readily available um, but like i said sometimes it's not always the most accurate way to do things or the most convenient another method people use are the levels and this is one type of level this one's from uh, edge technologies and they're not the only guys that make the levels levels are great and they're going to be accurate as long as your bed lathe is level so let's take a look at that your bed lathe actually has to be leveled and this has to be set to it if your lathe isn't perfectly level and you set this to a level point you're never going to be setting up your tool correctly so notice that there's a, an adjustment here this level actually turns in a cradle so if you set this up without a level and your if bed isn't level say you're facing it up like this you'll always be undercutting so this has to be dead spot on if you're going to use this type of setup and this whole video is coming about simply because i misplaced this the other day i had a, a mess out here on the bench i couldn't find anything this disappeared and i had to revert to one of my other uh, methods of setting the tool. Another method is simply using the center off your tailstock and coming up and, and aligning it uh, top to bottom like this. But sometimes that's not always a, a great way to do things because as you're looking up and down like this, you're not actually seeing across that point. And I'll use it just to get a rough idea. And then if I'm facing, I'll come in and face and, and eliminate the nub and then I know I'm centered again. But that takes a number of, of uh, loosening and tightening, loosening, tightening to get where you want to be. One of my favorite methods is using a ground hardened pin. And uh, you grind it so it's exactly 50% or exactly half of its dimension. And when you set it up in your chuck like this and bring your tool under it, as long as you've got it perpendicular, you should be able to come right up under that and have your tool just rub under the bottom edge of that so you always try to go to the middle of that point too because you know that that's going to be the most perpendicular point so this is is one of my all-time favorite methods but it doesn't work all the time this brings me back to a, a very common method within shops and that's just simply to take a piece of round stock like this and sit it down on the ways make a mark on here or make an undercut and always bring the tool to that undercut. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. And I'm gonna do it because I like having more tools in my toolbox. The more skill sets you have and the more tools you have, the better you're gonna be able to perform. So we're gonna change this up just a little bit though by, by adding a magnet to this. We're gonna counterbore this and we're gonna add a magnet to the inside of that. I don't know where I got this magnet, I just found it laying around, but just even on the side like that, it holds this up nicely. So with something like this, we'd be able to just magnetize it down the bed, bring, bring our tool up, make sure it's at the correct height, take this off and we're good to go. So as long as I get this tool in here, I can go ahead and make sure it's centered. Okay, no perceptible nub there, so that's good.
Okay, so let's put JB Weld up in there simply because the magnet itself is a little bit smaller than the hole. There we go. That should do it. Okay, this tool I already know is set to the right height. So let's make sure our way is nice and clean here. And uh, magnet side down. Actually, let me mark that. Scratch the surface there. There we go. I don't know if we can see that on the camera. The scratch mark right in that red. So, that looks good. Okay, so we'll uh, insert it this way. I want to make sure I'm right at that scratch mark with that edge there. So and then lock the carriage here. So we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a cut started here. Okay, that should give us plenty of ledge there. So we'll unlock this, get it out of the way. This is just a an approximately seven degree relief in case we're setting up for a, a cutoff blade, which needs that space to get up under that lip. So, and that's actually more important on the Monarch where it has a much uh, wider cutoff tool than, than this. All right, so let's get it out of there. And let's see how it works, okay? Okay, so let's get that up close. Get it right under there and back it right out. It's just skimming the bottom edge of that. So very nice. So another way you could manipulate this would be, for example, if you had the tool up here like this, you could just wheel it down until it goes click and makes contact. Because that magnet, when it hits that bed, it goes click, it locks right in place. So it, it gives you a perfect setting every time like this and because the bed always stays in the same relationship to the center point of the spindle it, it's never going to change as long as you keep the uh chips and stuff off of there it, it'll always come out right so let's, let's go try it on the monarch the monarch was set up just about perfect before i started and as you can see it, it comes right onto that edge so i mean that's you can't ask for better than that so i'm really really happy that the way that came out Okay, so that's just about it. Uh, I brought out the uh, cutoff tool that I use on the Monarch. And uh, as you can see, I created that relief back here so that that tool can get right up under that lip. So basically it comes down to picking my poison now. I mean, do I wanna use this? I, I think that's gonna be nice and handy. Uh, I'll just have to watch out for chips on that magnet that could throw me off, but you know, that's, an, that's no big deal. I'm always watching for chips anyway. I've always got this to fall back on. I, I do like the level, but I do tend to misplace it a lot, and and it does tend to go out of adjustment a lot. I, I'm always having to reset this. I don't know why, um, but when it works, it works well, so I like that. The, the ground pin has always been my favorite, and I have a couple of these. I have one for the uh, small chuck. I also have one for the large chuck. It's three-quarter, and I can put it in the other end in the uh, large chuck in the three-jaw, and uh, 
and that works really well. It, they're fast, but again, I usually end up having to walk back and forth to the toolbox to find that. So having this, I think, on the, the lathe bed or right handy is going to make a, a lot of difference. So I guess that's about it. I hope you've learned something or found something new that you can use. And it always helps to experiment and try new things. And uh, even if it doesn't become your favorite thing, at least it's just another tool in your toolbox. So I guess that's it. Again, and as always, from Florida, Dawn out.